This series that I'm starting this month, I'm going to tell you something. I believe it's going to be the most intense and almost the most powerful series that I'm going to teach so far. Um, So I want you guys to do this and put your seatbelt on, okay, just in case things get a little rough, you know, jump out. Um, I'm going to do my best to bring it in a way where it will shake the earth. Uh, It's not for the faint of heart, I'll tell you that for sure, all right? Um, This is going to be for those of you who are seriously wanting to walk this walk of faith, like for real, for real, okay? You know what I'm saying? Um, and for those of you that may be like, well, just give me a little bit of Jesus, well, then you're going to, you, it'll benefit you too. Um, it's called Traction. That's the series this, this month, Traction. Having a grip on faith. Having a grip on faith. Now, I'm going to say some things, guys. I'm not going to look at anybody. I'm just going to say some things, all right? So if I turn around, I talk to the wall, you know, you know what I'm going to. Because of the fact that I live my life like this myself, I may not be the most hardest person that preaches up here. You know, Pastor Paul compared me to Pastor Joel Osteen. I said, nice. That's, that'll, that'll work, <laughs> I guess. Bert Osteen. All right. And I do that on purpose. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I'm not here to judge or condemn anybody. I'm not. But I am here to strengthen you, empower you, to encourage you and to motivate you. Because that's what motivates and, and encourages and empowers me to have been living this life for 22 years without looking back. Come on, somebody say amen to that. Amen. Watch this, guys. With one church and one set of pastors. I got a good track record, so it'd be a good idea to perk up and listen. Amen. I'm not, I'm not tooting my own horn. I'm just saying. I mean, if you want to have somebody, you know what I'm saying? Okay. I'm faithful, and I will continue to be faithful to the Lord first, to the church, to my pastors, to my wife, to, my, my, to everybody, and to you guys. So even if you leave, I'll still be here. Amen. Amen. Traction. I went to go see Jay Castillo. Congratulations to Jay Castillo. He won third place in state track yeah. in Austin, Texas. We, Pastor Monique and I, Remy, we went to go uh, travel that way to go see him run. It was amazing, too. It was incredible. I never thought that a track meet could be so intense. I, I didn't. I didn't think it would be that, but it was intense. I was like, oh, my gosh, I feel like we're in a, like at a football game or something. I'm like, wow, just for running. Man, you, you should have heard some of them people like, I mean, when I was sitting next to them, they were all nice. Hi, well, I, who are you watching to run here? But during the run, it was like, Aah! I was like, oh, my gosh, what happened? You know, they're like, what happened to the nice lady that was sitting next to me? And she turned into a beast. Like, okay. So, but the runners themselves, guys, the runners, oh, my gosh. Some of them young folks, man, mm. When they were running, they get that stance, and they started to run. The, that's the only thing I could call it, the traction that these kids were displaying. Seriously, I almost felt as though that track was moving. You know what I'm saying? So much grip, so much traction, the way they were, I mean, and they were like, I mean, it was powerful. And they were moving, like it looked like they were moving the, the atmosphere. You know what I'm saying? Like it looked like the, the, like the air was not pushing them. They were pushing the air. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? I hope y'all guys are getting where I'm going with this. Life has a tendency to want to push you around. And that is not what God intended for a believer to live life like. 
You are not to let the world push you around. You are not to let the power, the prince of the power of the air push you around. You are supposed to be shifting the atmosphere. You are supposed to be having traction when it comes to whatever it is that you come to. And when I was seeing those runners run, my gosh, God was just speaking to me. He said, son, that's what faith does. Faith through the word of God is the traction that you have in this life. You should have a grip on faith so much that this world and everything that it got to offer, including trials and tribulations and fear and obstacles and all these other things that it tries to put on you, lies, deceit, deceivement, all that mess, that you are not touched by it. Amen. That you have, you have so much traction, it is you that's pushing the kingdom agenda on them, but not by force. No, no, no. But by the Holy Spirit on the inside of you. I went to a gas station to put in gas, right? And I didn't need that much gas, but we were traveling. So I went in and I said, yes, ma'am. And at that, we had cash. We didn't pay with cards that we had some cash. And I went in and I said, I said, yes, could I have? I was going to put $40. Some of y'all are like, what, 40 That's not a lot. So just, I said, I said, yeah, um. I said, I want to put 40 on pump number 10. I said, and if you can throw in an extra 10, that'll be 50. She looked at me like, uh, uh. I, I, she almost like said, yeah, okay, yes, sir. <laughs> I should have said 20. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but watch this. What was I doing? See, traction. You just push it. What would it hurt? She, she might have said, yeah. I'll do that. And you know what I would have done? I would have turned around and gave her 20. Because even though she said yes, the traction that I have will give her plus more. Yeah. Sometimes it's just a little test. Sometimes, guys, you guys are going through stuff in life, and it's just a little test. And y'all guys know, some of y'all that, that went through the series where I was teaching about tested for victory, y'all guys learned that. Sometimes in life it's just a test to test the traction, not to test you. Test attraction. Is your grip on faith or is your grip on sand? You trying to grip with sand? You gonna slip and slide. You ain't gonna you ain't gonna move nothing. But I'm here to tell you guys right now, in the name and through the blood of Jesus, watch this, guys. Some of you in here, you're about to take a grip of faith and you're about to start having some traction in your life because I think God is tired of seeing all this mess. I told you it's going to be a little intense. It's going to be a little strong, okay? But just please listen to me. This is for your betterment. I'm like the dad that tells you, hey, this hurts me more than it hurts you, okay? <laughs> Let me give you some statements that the Holy Spirit gave to me. Y'all write this down. You have to take notes. And then I'll give you the word. Watch. We are focusing too much on and are being distracted by problems, the defeats, the difficulties, the struggles, and the sickness. Instead of focusing on overcoming, having the victory, achieving the wins, all through the truth or the word. We're focusing too much on the problems. We're focusing too much on the obstacle. We're focusing too much on the, the opposition. We're focusing too much on that instead of focusing on, I'm going to overcome that. That's a good. We're good. I, I was sitting with somebody in my office this morning, and I said, how do you feel about this? And they said, Pastor, I feel like, you know what? I ain't even worried about nothing. I said, that's faith. You don't want to know why? Because most fear comes from the root of, of being afraid of dying. Okay? And, and when he looked at me, he said, you're right. I'm not afraid to die. No, we shouldn't because the word says to die is gain. And you guys know that within the last three years, especially during COVID, right, uh, age was not a reason to die anymore. That got taken. That flew out the window. That theology, oh, I'm going to wait till I get old, then I'll die. Well, COVID taught us that that is not true. You could be 18 years old and still, I'm going to be healthy. Be healthy as all get out. And boom, you're gone. And the word already told us that, that life is but a vapor. Yeah. 
You're here one minute, gone the next. That's it. So you cannot, you cannot invest your life into thinking that this world has more power than the kingdom of God. Like there is no way. I mean, if you want to live a sandy life, that's fine. We'll change your name to Sandy. Come on. All right? If that's what we want, if that's what you want. But if you're going to, but here, here's one thing that's happening here in this life. I'm going to tell you guys, even believers, watch this. We're trying to build the rock with sand. We're trying to mix the old and the new. We're still trying to scrunch and scrape and run, and, and, and you're, you're not even using faith. You're afraid of what's coming. You're letting people push you around. The scheduling, the people, and this, the hurt, the emotions, all this stuff. And all of that is just a distraction to keep you from the real thing. And and let me just say this, guys. This life that we're living here right now, this life, this is not the real life. This ain't the real life. We're on a road trip, man. We're just passing through this place. And I like what Paul said, and Philippi said, you know what, in whatever state that I'm in, and he's not talking about like Texas or Georgia, he's talking about in whatever state in life that he's in right now, he said, I have learned to be content. Well, I don't like this, and I don't like that. Who cares? Learn to be content, because this ain't the real life. And you're so, you're, we're too worried and focused about the problems and the, and the shortcomings and, and, and because I don't have enough or I can't do enough or this and this and that. A lot of it just has to do with fear. And, and, and listen, guys, we need to focus on faith. Amen. We need to focus on the word. Are you here? We have to learn to push through life's pressures of this world. Um, I remember hearing about this uh, gentleman who was going to go, uh, he was going to go scuba diving. And so they had to train him in holding his breath in case something happened. So at the very beginning, I said, all right, guys, we're going we're gonna to see how long you can hold your breath. So he goes, all right, that's great, good, we'll do it. And he gets down and he held his breath for 10 seconds and he pops right up. He's like, oh, man, that's the most I can hold my breath. He says, no, you can do more. He goes, no, man, that, that's it. He goes, all right, here's what I want you to do. When you go down into the water, hold your breath. And right when you're about to hit 10 seconds, right before you hit 10 seconds, I want you to focus on all the little particles that are inside the water. Bubbles, particles, bugs, whatever it is that you see in there. I want you to focus on the things and watch them and follow them. He said, uh, okay. So he goes down under. And he's at, he's fixed, he's at six, seven, and then eight. And then he starts looking at all the little particles. He's like, oh, wow, man. And he's holding his breath. He's looking, and he sees all kinds of, he sees that, and he sees this. And then finally, he realizes he's holding his breath. <laughs> and then he pops up out of the water. And the trainer said, did you focus on all the particles in the water? He said, yeah, I did. I did. He goes, you know how long you were in the water for? Goes, no, 30 seconds. Wow. He didn't know that he had that in him. He didn't know. He thought all he could do was hold his breath for 10 until he started focusing on something else other than what he thought he needed to be focusing on. Praise yeah. God. Oh, my gosh. You need to learn how to push past life's pressures. Life's pressures are not meant to push you, traction people. You are supposed to be pushing life itself. Because there's two kinds of lives, just like there's two kinds of peace. Jesus said the peace I give you is not the peace like the world gives you. That means the world got the type of peace, but Jesus got a different kind of peace. The world got a life, but Jesus got a different life. And the life that Jesus gives us is a life that will endure, that's everlasting, that's eternal. Come on, somebody. This life that Jesus has for you not only allows you to be here, but it'll take you there. Y'all guys got to know something, guys. You got to know this. You're, the life that you're living here on this earth is short in comparison to the life we're going to live up ahead. Yeah. And that's whether you're up there or you're in another, another place than up there. And I ain't going to say it, but it kind of sounds like the hell we had uh, the other day. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? H-A-I-L. 
And if that hail hits you, it hurts too. So it's, anyway, so. All right, so we have to learn to push through last pressures of this world. Remember, where's Brother Ruben? Brother Ruben, you remember when we went, uh, when we went fishing that one time? It was a guided tour. We went to the Gulf of Mexico. Uh, remember that, Brother Armando? We went fishing one time out there. And the Gulf, we were out there in the middle. What the heck were we doing? I didn't, what? I'm like, my wife one day said, man, you were out like in the Gulf of Mexico out there? I said, you should have seen what color the water changed into. Like it went black, dark blue. Remember that? Or was it my shades that just did that? I was wearing some shades. Anyways, anyways, we were out there. But remember the, the, the guide tour, he told us, he said, hey, guys, listen, man, if you start feeling a little oozy out here, because we're just on a boat, guys, like amongst shark and dolphin, what are we doing? <laughs> my gosh. Anyways, <laughs> we're brave. We're courageous. We have faith. <laughs> anyways, we're out there, right? And what he said, he said, if the boats, if you start feeling a little oozy, he says, start focusing on something that's grounded. He says, start focusing on something that's grounded, whether it be that lighthouse or it be the trees over there or the ground or whatever you can see that's grounded. He says, put your eyes on that and don't focus on the water. Don't focus on the boat rocking for. He says, focus on something that's grounded. Amen. Somebody better hear me in this house. He said, that will keep you from getting queasy. Well, some people on my boat didn't look at something that was grounded. Anyways, let's not go there. So, uh, <laughs> I didn't want to say that, but yes. All right, so, uh, well, listen, I did. I started feeling a little, and I mean, there were where's, but I didn't say nothing, you know. I didn't want to show no fear for the men. I was like, but inside I was like, well, I'm mine. No, nah, man, boom. I focus on something, and, and immediately, oh, like praise God. And all I heard in the side was, <laughs> I was like, focus. <laughs> Anyways, bueno pues. so look, man, focus on something that is grounded, you know, winning the ocean. Praise the Lord. Um, you know, God didn't intend for us to stay there. Now, I'm going to read you guys the scripture. Now, we're going to continue on this, guys, all right? There's a whole lot more. This is just the beginning of this series. I want you to go to Hebrews chapter 12. Start in verse 1. It says, Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us. And let us run with patience the race that is set before us. So we're running a race. And if you're running a race, guys, you better have some good traction on your shoes. I can see. If you're caught up in snow, you're driving your car, and you're caught up in snow, and your tires look like watermelon skin, that ain't going to be too good for you. I think you're going to be like just spinning your wheels, but I can see, right, in the snow. You need to have some good traction on your tires. You need to have some good traction on your shoes. You need to have a grip on faith when you run this race. Watch what it says in verse 2. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, that is what we need to do. Who is the author and finisher of our faith, who for, who for the joy that was set before him, Endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Can I tell you this? He wasn't focused on the shame. He wasn't focused on the opposition. He wasn't focused on what the world thought about him. He wasn't focused on they were going to whip him. He wasn't focused on the crown that they were going to put on his head and make him bleed on his head. He wasn't focused on the whippings that he took. And if you haven't watched The Passion of the Christ, go check and see how that whooping looked because they, even that did not depict the reality of what he went through. Praise God. But you can kind of see what he went through, but he was not distracted by that. He had something that was said before him. See, watch this, guys. He had us on his mind when he went through that. 
so that we could have him on our mind while we're going through this. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Did y'all get that? Huh? He had us on his mind when he was going through all that mess so that when you're going through all your mess, you can have him on your mind. Hmm. All right, let's keep on going. For consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself. Least you be wearied and faint in your minds. Consider him that endures such contradiction of sinners. Contradictions, the problems, all the lacks, all the hostility, huh? all the problems, the troubles, the old, all this and that that goes on in here. God's are giving us an antidote. He's saying, hey, guys, listen, when you're going through all that mess, consider Jesus. Remember what he did. Keep your sights on him. But I can only hold my breath for 10 seconds. No, keep your eyes on him. But I'm starting to feel queasy. No, no. Put your eyes on him. Well, I'm, I'm tired. No, 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 no. Put your eyes on him. It says when you put your eyes on him, what's another translation said in the New Living Translation? It says, think of all the hostility he endured from sinful people. Then you won't become weary and give up. In the New Living Translation, do we have that one up there? Yeah, think of all the hostility he endured from the sinful people. Then you won't become weary and give up. When you're going through stuff, you're not called to be weary. You're not called to worry. You're not called to give up. Amen. Listen, guys, when you have traction, when you have a grip on faith, this is how you live your life. Too many people say they have faith, but they don't live it out. And see, faith is not something that you have to say you have it. It's supposed to, you're supposed to have evidence when you walk by faith. There should be fruit when you walk by faith. Like, there should be something there that sees, says, man, my gosh, that person walks by faith. Just like I seen somebody walking by faith this morning in my office. And he's still walking by faith right now. Because they ain't going to let none of that stuff stop them. Because, listen, as long as we're here on this earth, we still got hope. Okay, let me see. All right, let's go to the CV. So keep your mind on Jesus, who put up with many insults from sinners. Anybody here ever had an insult? It says, keep your mind on Jesus, who put up with many insults from sinners. Then you won't get discouraged and give up. Now, the message is going to be kind of lengthy back there, and I forgot to tell you just to put this one section part, but that's okay if you put it all the way up. Did you put out the whole message? Go ahead. Put it up. See what it says. All right. Let's go to the bottom line. Wait, wait. Let me see. Oh, can we keep on going? Go to the next one. I like that. Study how he did it. Whoo, praise God. All right. Go down this part right here, guys. Watch this. Where it says, when, right here on this, on this line. Let's start there, okay? Watch this. When you find yourselves flagging in your faith, go over that story again, the story of Jesus, item by, oh, 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 man, come on, Sister Miranda, praise God. Somebody, we'll have to give her a raise. She's like, wait, well, I don't even get paid. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I love that. Beautiful. Thank you so much. When you find yourself flagging in your faith, go over that story again, item by item. Watch this. That long litany of hostility he plowed through. The next line says, that will shoot adrenaline into your soul. Adrenaline shot into your soul. This section, somebody must, well, okay. I'm telling you guys, this is the way to live. As a matter of fact, four times in the Old Testament and the New Testament, God tells us the just shall live by faith. 
You live by faith. St. Corinthians says we walk by faith and not by sight. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna, today was just a little opening, guys. I'm going to tell you, I'm going to say, okay, it's faith. What's faith? And I'll, I'll teach you more on that as the keep coming weeks is coming. But one thing I can tell you is this. Faith is not moved by what you can see, all right? No matter what it is, it's moved by what God has already made available to you. And it's just a matter of discovering that on the inside of you because it's all in there. And it's the best way to live is, is living by faith. Because that means you always keep your eyes on Jesus. Always. That man, he did it, I can do it too. Because as he is, 1 John chapter 4, verse 17, as he is, so are we in this world. So he endured it, I can too. This ain't, this, ain't it. this ain't all to it right here. What you ever got to say, whatever you got to say, you got to be careful when people say stuff like that to you. You can't let them, and you can't let that push you. You, you got to have traction. All right. Time's up already for me. Oh, y'all want more? I mean, let's just stop. Let's just stop. I'm going to give you this, these couple of things. This will just be a little beginning to where we're heading to next, but I want you to understand a couple of things. How, how, some things, how some ways that you can have traction in your faith? Here's how. Forgive people first. Be the first one to forgive them. Don't wait for them to forgive you. Be the initiator of forgiveness. Love them anyways. Well, you don't know what they've done. Love them anyways. Well, they're not worth it, man. They're a bunch of low lives. Love them anyways. They're a bunch of sinners. Love them anyways. Well, they don't fit into my circle, man. Just love them anyways. Pray for them who hate you in the way you want God to bless you. What? Como? Como? Say it again. Pray for those, pray for them who hate you and pray for them in the way you want God to bless you. That's having traction. There's no way I'm going to pray for them to be blessed, man. They're mean. They're ugly. They talk about me. They don't like my hair. You know what? Pray for them. Well, I don't know how to pray for them. Well, how do you want God to bless you? Well, I want God to bless me with a good family. I want God to bless me with a good house. I want God to bless me in my walk with God. I want God to bless my mind. Okay, you pray the same way for them. Are you here? Oh, that's hard. Of course it's hard. That's why you got the Holy Spirit on the inside of you to help you. Humble yourself to God, then to people. Humble yourself first to God, then to people. And those are just a couple. I got a whole long list of things that I can just share with you guys, but I'm not going to do that today. But I want you guys to come back next Sunday. We'll continue on part two, attraction, because we're going to learn some things dealing with faith. I hope you guys can come back too. Pastor Ernest, let him go. All right, praise the Lord. No, I'm just kidding. Y'all guys got an amazing church over there. Y'all guys do well. But that's all I have for you guys today. How many of y'all received that in the house this morning? Amen. Let's stand to our feet.